Good morning. Uh, my name is Marcia Warren Edelman. I'm happy to be here this morning with uh, two of my colleagues, Tatiana Fertelmeister and Maylee watts Witten. Um, I'm bringing you an interview today with these two uh, wonderful people. We're going to be speaking about a very important topic, uh, the difference that trust makes in the business of diversity. Uh, Cultural Global Labs is a new online platform, uh, learning community. Uh, we provide training and resources, interviews and webinars that are focused on bridging the fields of intercultural communication, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and health and well-being. So today I'm really excited uh, to approach this topic because it bridges a lot of these different areas. Um, I myself am a therapist, so I really, uh, you know, am invested in the concept of trust um, and very curious to hear what our speakers uh, have to say about the role of trust in the work that they do. Thank you so much. Um, I am Millie watts Witten, and I'm joining you all from San Antonio, Texas, where it's uh, beautiful outside. The clouds have been particularly special these last couple of days, I just got to say. <laughs> um, and I was asked to give an introduction, and we said, why in the world might we be doing the work that we're doing? Yeah, and as I would frame it, and the work that I do is to bring people together across their differences, real and perceived. Yeah. Um, this is uh, an engineering project. It is an act of creativity, and it's something that's both intellectual and very much of the heart as well. Um, it's a conundrum, I think, <laughs> for society. And I do very much believe in all of that, that as we join in principled struggle together, that that is part of the both process and product of the work, yeah? so. Uh, I'm glad to be in that for nearly a couple decades now and have the benefit of learning from, from colleagues like Tatiana and like you, being in the room with people that are striving to be an organization, in organization together, uh, has really been my best education. So I'm glad to be here with you all today and uh, share what I've experienced about this, this little thing called trust. Thank you so much, Maylee. Tatiana. Uh, thank you. So my name is Tatiana Fortenmeister. Uh, my accent came with me from Russia 30 plus years ago, and it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I live in uh, Chicago area where I first met May Lee before she ran away from here all the way to <laughs> San Antonio. Um, I am an intercultural consultant and trainer with a background in mental health. I run my company that's called Connecting Differences and the approach to work is wherever there are people, there are differences. Um, same as Maylis company name, Engage Between, reflects what she was talking about, you know, really engaging uh, different people and with different people. I very much believe in the importance of navigating differences and connecting differences um, with curiosity and with uh, the sense of wonder about each other. Uh, my own history of uh, being born Jewish in Russia with its history of anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. coming to the United States as a uh, refugee, uh, being a woman who fits very well with being white until I open my mouth, mm -hmm. uh, is really all about uh, figuring out how to manage differences and how to make them work in my own life and I believe that it is a very important set of skills and abilities that we develop through this process and then we can put them to work whether it is in the workplace 
whether it is in our marriages uh, or parenting adult children who for some reason have their opinions on life, you know, so <laughs> that's kind of where I uh, go with, uh, with my passion and with my reasoning for why I do what I do in my uh, work. Mm. Thank you, Tatiana and Maylie. We notice that we hear a good deal about the concepts of empathy and compassion when people are talking about diversity training or intercultural communication. Um, but the subject of trust doesn't come up as much or doesn't get as much focus, yeah? Um, so what does trust mean to you? Um, and how does that impact the work that you do? Um, Maylee, I'd love to, to hear your thoughts on that. So what does trust mean? to me and how does it uh, impact the work? Mm -hmm. uh, or how, I'll, important, how important would it be to the work that you do, perhaps? Mm -hmm. um, Tatiana and I, in our work together, have come to a gym, yeah? And the gym is that we need trust before, uh, before we need it. <laughs> we need to build trust before we need the richness of it, yeah? Uh, the safety net of it, uh, the courage of it, or, or whatever it might provide to us. Um, trust is what can bring things forward. Trust, trust is, is maybe the point upon which the work pivots if it's in fragile balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what does it mean to me? Uh, I read something um, some time ago that was talking about how we needed to have different, uh, I'm sorry, similar definitions of standards or um, ideas or practice. Mm -hmm. And if we did not have this similar idea, then we could not trust each other. So even if I want to come into trust with you, if you envision something very differently from me, mm -hmm. yeah, how can I trust that we can walk together on that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, trust is we have a similar understanding or we understand what one another's understanding is of a concept or a practice, right? So that I know that when I send you to the grocery store to get me a, I don't know, uh, a bottle of milk, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. um, you're going to come back with something that, that I like and want, right? And not something. <laughs> that has GMO, I don't know, you know. <laughs> um, I was speaking recently with a family member who, whose name I will not disclose, yeah. And so here's just a little example. So I'm like super pregnant right now by nine months. Yeah. And uh, I was speaking with a family member and saying, yeah, well, you know, we really want you, my partner and I, mm -hmm. um, to be with the baby as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. and we also need you to quarantine and this person's like oh yeah yes 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 of course it's covid there's a pandemic there's a new baby coming it has you know mm -hmm. limited white blood cells the first six weeks are very important to build that immune system totally understand i got you right mm -hmm. i'll be with you when the baby comes mm -hmm. but then we learned that this person <laughs> is not quarantining <laughs> that we don't have the same idea of what quarantine means, right? Like, is it a social distance thing or is it like a stay in your house and don't touch other people thing, right? Yeah. Um, so I'll wrap up this example quickly. It's not like about the business of it, but to make it just real and personal, mm -hmm. uh, we, we had a conversation again about what we mean by, you know, staying safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were explicit about you know, when we come in our home, this is what we do. This is what we don't do. When we, um, you know, how do we make decisions about going out in public, right? So that this person knew um, what our standards were, right? And we could trust that even though they had good intentions, yeah, yeah. to yeah. stay at home and all of this, we can trust that the behaviors mm, were parallel, right? Mm -hmm. And that uh, would keep our state of minds <laughs> uh, 
in a, in a good place with this person as well, yeah. right? Yeah. We trust this person now because we have been explicit about the behaviors that come with this particular practice. Yeah. Um, but trust means a lot. Yeah. I can want to trust you. And I think that, you know, if we get, it's hard to get people to a place where they want to be in trust with one another. Mm -hmm. Right. My goodness. What, what a, what a challenge that can be already. Yeah. Um, and then when we get together and we fail in our, in our practice of trust together, then, you know, you both as, as psychologists mm -hmm. can tell us <laughs> what are the effects of coming back to that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we ever do. Yeah. I, I love what you're, what you're expressing, Meili. And before I turn it over to Tatiana, I just want to emphasize that to me, as I'm hearing you talk, trust is not a given. I think a lot of folks, and, and I imagine this is culturally specific, and I would love to get into that too, in terms of how trust is considered from culture to culture. But trust doesn't just happen, right? It, the desire is there, right, from what I'm hearing you say, but that certain aspects have to be explicit in order for the trust to actually take root. And I think that does apply to the work that you all do, you know, the expressed um, parameters, the expressed behaviors, the expressed goals. Uh, it sounds like that would be part of building trust in a client relationship, perhaps, or in an organization. I think in this work, especially, when you come in saying words like diversity, equity, inclusion, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When you come in saying things like intercultural competence, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, wait a second. <laughs> I'm competent in the work that I do, right? Mm -hmm. um, as an engineer or an HR person or whatever my career is, mm -hmm. right? So then there's a, I think that there's um, at, at best a curiosity and perhaps um, at the other spect spectrum a um, suspicion <laughs> about what is it that you're trying to do together with us when we go into the the workshop room or the training room. Yeah, mm -hmm. We have to build that trust. And I think that for me as a practitioner, it's not just being competent. I learned a while ago that competence is not, not the end all, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be likable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. think there's a dimension of entertainment. Hmm. Yeah. There's, um, you know, Tatiana mentioned something that I do when we uh, train together virtually and I do the same when we are um, in person. I will check in with people one by one. Mm -hmm. Hey, how's the training going for you? Right? Um, because I want to make little connections so that we can build upon them. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Otherwise, it just doesn't stick. It's not just an intellectual process. It's very, it's a, an emotional process. Please. That's personal. Yes, Tatiana, I, I, let's, uh, let's share, let's hear your, your thoughts on this topic. Um, I don't think on topics. <laughs> <laughs> I most often think in response to uh, what comes up in conversation and a couple of things that I want to share in response to what Meili was saying. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, in the United States, uh, one of the, if we think about cultural dimensions and what is uh, believed to be true about one culture versus another culture, uh, it's common for people in this culture to uh, kind of have a certain sense of control. We are in control of our environment. We kind of have a lot to say about how things are going. It's different in different groups within the United States, but overall that's the perceived way of being here. I come from the culture where historically we know that the rug can be pulled from underneath of you in any moment, so you're always ready. Mm -hmm. So long before any pandemic happened, we knew that you always wash your hands, and you don't show your baby to anybody until the baby is six months old, <laughs> six weeks old. <laughs> so that's it. And you don't have to decide can you or can you not trust <laughs> somebody 
you just don't, you know, so you, you impose your own, your own rule. Mm -hmm. And uh, so culturally, what it is that we trust enough to feel that we are standing on a solid ground with it, Mm -hmm. And where we don't, yeah, and we manage our lives around that. And that is very different from one culture to another. Uh, when Meili said, if I send you uh, to the store to bring a bottle of milk, um, one of my favorite cultural stories comes from the time when I was doing the work with uh, professionals who were working with refugees. And that's where Meili and I first met because she worked for one of the refugee resettling agencies in Chicago at the time. And I was coordinating this multi-agency project where we were figuring out how to do family life education with, with uh, refugees. Um, and in one of the uh, trainings, there was a woman from uh, Africa, I think she was from uh, Cameroon, but I might be wrong now, it's been a long time ago. Um, she gave a wonderful example of how uh, her experience of going to the store to get a bottle of milk would go. Yeah, when her mother would send her to the store and say, you know, go get a bottle of milk, a loaf of bread or whatever, and as a child, she would run there and run back and she would be very happy uh, to come back with your, her task <laughs> kind mm -hmm. of completed. And her mom would say, why are you home so quickly? And she said, oh, I was running. I was trying to kind of complete my task. And her mom would say, no, that is wrong. Did you stop on your way to pay your respect to uncle so-and-so, mm -hmm. to auntie so-and-so? Oh, no, no, I was in a hurry. No, <laughs> you don't do it this way. Yeah? You stop and you pay respect because one day you will need a lot of support for a really big task. When did she share this story? When we were talking about how do you manage time cross-culturally? And she would say how long it took her to learn to make it to the staff meeting before the end of the meeting because she would need to stop on her way <laughs> and, pay, and pay her respects, yeah? yeah. Again, uh, her mother was in a way telling her the same thing uh, that Meili and I figured out as our formula. You build trust before you need it. You build relationships before you need it, yeah? But what does that mean cross-culturally when I invest into building trust? Am I spending my time effectively or am I wasting my time socializing? Yeah, depending on how the culture looks at it, it can be, it can be very different. And the American workplace in the good American cultural tradition is built with the focus on task and uh, trust either happens or doesn't happen somehow, you know, as a byproduct. Um, and the trust that is byproduct doesn't always hold very well, yeah? And so in some ways, finding kind of the middle ground between cultures that invest a lot of time before getting to task and those who, in some ways we need to be able to build the plane as we're flying it. Mm -hmm when we are building uh, trust. And then trust becomes, in many ways, um, can I count on you? Can I trust you to have my back when I am not there? Whether it is in a staff meeting or in, ho in keeping uh, quarantine rules when I'm not watching you, yeah? <laughs> can, I, can I trust you uh, in, that, in that way? And it doesn't have to be, you know, 100% of ideal human being on the other side of, the, of this trust continuum. 
but it needs to be an honest enough effort of both people, yeah? Uh, and the space that allows to have a conversation about, you know, hmm, I was kind of trusting you this way and that's what happened and let's figure that out. Hmm. In every culture, there is a, a concept of trust. People know what it is to trust and not to trust. But it is much easier sometimes to define it by, you know, the absence of it. I can't trust this person, yeah? I don't know if I can count on them. I don't know if, and that's why the trust itself is not something that we got and we can hold it. It's not something that we can arrive to and sit there, yeah? Mm -hmm. It is the process, it is the journey, it is moment to moment experiencing it or absence of it and working on making it um, to be there. Mm. <laughs> there's, there's so much in what you just said, Tatiana, there's so much. I mean, there, the, the, the what I keep hearing, and I think in, in what both of you have talked about initially about trust, is something that, you know, I think people take for granted, but it's so important. It's relationship. Yeah? It's building relationship. It, all the words that you're using to describe, you know, the process, time, you know, um, do they have my back, you know? It, even the example of, of the tasks, you know, um, and, and not doing them so quickly because you're stopping off along the way uh, to pay your respects, you know, all those to me circulate around the concept of relationship versus the concept of getting something done or achieving a goal or something in that way. Um, would you say that that's something that, that people overlook in terms of this process of, of intercultural and diversity work is building relationships and building trust? Are they too, in the work that you do, do you find that people are very focused on outcomes? For instance, you know, we wanna make sure that we have, you know, X amount of people of color, you know, hired, or we wanna make sure that, you know, we, we've got, you know, two or three people in our, you know, the, the frame of the, the photo shoot that are people of color. I mean, it's, it seems like there's a, it, and this is just my perception, is that there seems to be easy fixes that people want to do, but it really feels like it's the relationship piece that builds the trust that affects the long-term change. What are your thoughts on that? People, I think, uh, who approach me in this work, people who are clients directly, you know, clients of clients, I don't think they really bargain to do some kind of trust building in what they're looking for uh, in the course of an engagement. They're looking to fix something. Hmm? They're looking to um, uh, fix it to troubleshoot so that, you know, something doesn't happen, right? Sometimes it's reactive, sometimes it's proactive, most times it's a balance between the two. They're not necessarily expecting that they will be called upon in their personal choices, right? Um, to connect with other people in, in something called trust, right? That's not cerebral. <laughs> that can't be measured, yeah? And that doesn't feed into the bottom line, whether we have a financial bottom line or a triple bottom line or whatever. Um, so I think that's one thing. And I don't know that, <laughs> I don't know the extent to which uh, clients with whom I have worked would be down for that at the get. I think, you know, like, so Tatiana and I just, just would just completed um, an assignment with an organization and, and we did together, the group did go through a, a process of building trust with our facilitation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think we did an all right job. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> would we have sold them on the concept if we had said, yes, we would like you to build trust together. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we'll be starting with. And they're like, well, wait a second, we have this thing that we need to resolve. <laughs> Where does that come into play? Right. The task again. Yeah. 
Um, you know, this is a task-oriented culture. It likes to measure, it likes to count. And I think that the approach of we'll just bring people together and that's it, and that is the result. Whether it is two of us coming together and you know, deciding to work together as consultants or a team of people brought together on some uh, you know, project or um, you know, a random collection of young people coming together to become, you know, a, a class in, 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 in college. Uh, what, how do we make it work from there? Yeah. Uh, and trust is uh, a huge ingredient uh, that uh, needs to needs to happen there, needs to develop, needs, you cannot take it as a supplement. Yeah, it's something. <laughs> is that an app for that? <laughs> Not an app. <laughs> yeah, there is no app for, for that. Yeah, so you know how sometimes they say, you know, you can't, uh, your body is not making this, you know, you have to take it as a, as a supplement. Yeah. In this case, you cannot take it as a supplement. The body of your relationship has to, <laughs> has to produce it. Oh, I love that.